What's up, guys? Rick here with my top five sleepers for this week's American Express. These are golfers that are a little bit further down the player pool, a little bit further down the betting board that might be good options for your lineups or for top fives, top tens, outrights if you're feeling real frisky. Uh, if you're feeling super frisky, join us 3 p.m. Eastern time on the Rick Run Good YouTube channel. Uh, live chat for the American Ex Express Q&A ownership, all that good stuff. And then 8, 15 PM Eastern time, same spot, Rick run good YouTube channel for the jock market power hour. Tons of fun. Myself, Joe Idoni talking through stock market, DFS, buying, selling, trading, all that good stuff. Let's jump into the sleepers for this week's American express. Let's start with Paul Casey. He's 45 to one to win this golf tournament. He's very reasonably priced in the $8,000 range on DraftKings, And this is really in regards to his pedigree. You know, Paul Casey still ranked as the number 27 player in the world. I don't think I would have realized that if I didn't go and look it up. But remember the stretch of golf where he had to play after the restart and then trying to continually get into the next event of the playoffs. He played seven straight events and he talked about how gassed he was after that stretch and you didn't really see it. I mean, the, the results were good. He finished runner up at the PGA championship. He played well for top twenties at the BMW championship and the U S open. And then after that, as we flipped over to the new, uh, you know, calendar or the, the new PGA tour season, when we got to Shriners and CJ cup, it wasn't as good, but he made the cut at the masters, which is the last time we saw him. And I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, you know, when we haven't seen golfers for as many weeks as even even three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, um, you you have to kind of revert them back to their long term form. And long term form for Paul Casey's very good. It's that he's going to be a great ball striker. He's going to struggle with the flat stick, and if he can be a zero putter, he can contend. I just think he is underpriced compared to some of his peers who probably do not have the pedigree nor the upside that Paul Casey does to potentially make some noise this week. Next up is Sam Burns, and if you watch the DFS preview, if you saw anything that I might have written this week uh, or will write this week, uh, Sam Burns' name is probably going to pop up there. And he's 70-1 to 1 now. I think he actually opened uh, at 90, so there is a bit of movement on this number. And Sam Burns checks off a lot of boxes for me. If you look at recent form... He finishes seventh at the Houston Open. That's the last time we saw him two months ago. That's his second top seven finish of the new 2021 season. Then you look at uh, what he has done at this event in the past and you realize he's finished 18th and he's finished sixth. So Sam Burns, I don't know how overlooked he will go this week, especially as we get closer to, to wet Thursday morning when all of this kicks off. We'll see what, what that ownership is, especially on Wednesday. But, um, you know, Sam Burns could be easily forgotten about uh, considering we haven't seen him play since November. And he carries a big stick, literally. His driver, phenomenal off the tee, has been this season behind only Bryson DeChambeau and Rory McIlroy in terms of strokes gained off the tee. So for me, Sam Burns, a lot of different formats, a lot of sprinkling of outrights, top fives, top tens. I think he is uh, very undervalued on this slate. Martin Laird is next, and he's 110 to 1. And let's be real, this is super deep. Uh, and and there's not much confidence in this, but you got to remember, Martin Laird won the Shriners just four starts ago. Then he missed a couple of cuts, and he played well at the Tournament of Champions. That's the last time we saw him. He finished T17. That's a field of 42. Uh, you know, if you start you know, listing or power ranking the guys before the week, Martin Laird would not have been inside the top 20. So the fact that he outperformed expectations, I think is a really good thing. And say what you will about this event. It's kind of quirky. It's kind of weird. They have the course rotation. Uh, now this year, only going to two courses instead of three, but I do like guys who have played here a lot. I think it, you know, really it gets them used to some of the weird things that are going to go on and, and, and seeing how these courses play out. And Martin Laird has not missed the start at this event in 13 consecutive years. He's made the cut in nine of those occasions. He has one top 10. That was a T9 in 2017. So there's at least plenty of familiarity with this setup. So for me, if you're really desperate, if you're really deep, I'm okay with Martin Laird. Not super thrilled about it, but I do think he is worth a second look. Next up is Francesco Molinari, and I know, I get it, I get it, he's 110 to 1, take everything you know 
about Francesco Molinari from the last year and throw it out the window. I don't know of any golfer uh, whose 2020 was more of a wash than Francesco Molinari. Of course, a lot of golfers, uh, every golfer, missed at least 91 days. The Euro guys missed more than that. And Molinari only ended up playing seven times. Only three of them after the restart. He was, uh, obviously there was, there's COVID and travel restrictions. And then he was moving his family to California and there was just a lot going on for him. So I'm willing to say, take that terrible 2020 season where you only played seven times. You missed the cut in five of them, throw it out the window. I look at what he did in Houston, which is two starts ago for him. It's one of his most recent finishes and he finished T15. He gained strokes in all four categories that week. He's going to a place that he has two top 12 finishes in his last four starts. He's only played it four times. I think this is a really interesting redemption year, but redemption spot for Molinari. Am I thrilled about it? No. He's 110 to 1 for obvious reasons, but I think there's something to look at. And that's really what I want to do is I want to present you with golfers or names or situations that you might not have considered to take a deeper look and see if Molinari is the right guy for you. So that's what I'm doing here. Francesco Molinari, he's 110 to 1. And then finally, Kramer Hickok. That is probably not a name I have said much on this channel uh, over the years. He's 175 to one to win the American Express. He's $6,700 on DraftKings. And I actually want to give credit to Sia Najad for this. He came on the First Cut podcast, the CBS Sports uh, podcast that I host. He came on to break down the DFS slate with me and he, he pointed out this name. And I went and I dug a little bit deeper. And I was like, oh my God, like what is going on with this guy? And you look at his last three starts. Bermuda, he goes T8. Houston Open, T58, but he makes the cut. And Sony Open last week, a T19. So a top 20 last week. And then I went even deeper and I looked at how he played. And Kramer Hickok, of all people, was ninth in strokes gained T to green last week. Finished T19, as I mentioned. Hit the ball beautifully off the tee. Was a small positive on the approach. Gained around the greens. And he was a small negative putting. That is a great composition heading into the American Express, which has historically allowed a lot of long time long shot winners, right? Adam Long won this at 500 to 1. Andrew Landry won this at 200 to 1. That was just the last 3 years cuz this is kind of a wacky crazy event. And maybe it's Kramer Hickok who breaks through at 175 to 1 and wins this one. Probably not, but I do think that there is plenty of value in his drafts Kings number and again someone else to look at that you might not have considered. There you go. My top five sleepers for this week's American Express. I hope you enjoy. Let me know if there's anybody I missed. I'm sure there is. Tweet me at Rick Rungood. Leave a comment below. Best of luck, and I'll talk to you guys soon.